When the Chesapeake Bay was healthy, its watershed was 95% forested. The trees captured and infiltrated the rain in centuries-old leaf mold. We've replaced more than half of that forest with houses, driveways, roads, shopping centers, parking lots, and we've piped the resulting runoff into the nearest waterways. We're standing in, on the shores of the Chesapeake Bay in the community of Manhattan Beach in Serona Park, Maryland. Uh, this community is typical of the older communities constructed in the early and middle part of uh, the last century in that uh, stormwater was managed as the enemy uh, where uh, we piped it or vented it along the curbs and gutters as quickly as we could into tidewater. So time's gone on and we now as a society recognize uh, the problems associated with that treatment of the water train delivering pollutants and hot water and uh, other damaging effects to tidewater of the Chesapeake Bay. Most of the citizens of these communities live here because of the Chesapeake Bay. And so we're at a street end park um, that uh, essentially serves as the community beach uh, to employ new techniques that have been developed to re reverse the damage um, caused by uh, that uh, convey and vent methodology of the past. Uh, what we're doing here today is a combination living shoreline and coastal plain outfall. So uh, these projects together are going to pick up water that's running off of the paved surfaces of this street, surface water runoff, uh, collect that water into pools, and then filter that water down into an underlying sand seam, thereby converting that hot polluted surface water to cold, clean groundwater and delivering it into tidewater as a springhead seat. Construction of these uh, coastal plain outfall projects begins with the excavation of a trench from the top of the project uh, down to the receiving water, uh, a, a trench about eight feet wide and four feet deep to hold a, a chamber of sand. And that also serves as the haul road. We place mulch over top of that, wood mulch, uh, wood chips, um, and that serves as a haul road, access for the heavy equipment and trucks and so forth. Um, from there, uh, in this case, we're beginning with a living shoreline project, so at the, at, uh, at the tidal interface. From there, we begin construction uh, with uh, placement of, um, in this case, two groins on either side of the property, and then sand fill uh, the beach area, which, as you can see, um, is subsequently planted with marsh grasses. Um, and then construction begins with uh, the placement of large boulders, these sandstone boulders here, which are then backfilled with the same cobble uh, to form a riffle grade control structure. Um, each of those riffle grade control structures supports a, a pool behind it. So now when the rains come, Water is captured in those pools and it's infiltrated into that underlying sand bed. Here we're planting Spartina alterniflora and Spartina patens. The Spartina patens is planted above um, the highest tides. The Spartina alterniflora is planted uh, at the tidal interface between mean high water and mean low water. So this particular project required 173 cubic yards of sand fill. Uh, that's 12 loads, about 12 loads of sand. 85 cubic yards of the silica cobble, the rounded stones that you see here, or about six uh, truckloads. And uh, three truckloads of boulders or 40 cubic yards of the sandstone boulders. Uh, the sandstone boulders are uh, bog iron, um, limonite, they're uh, iron concretions. It's the only large boulder that's native to the coastal plain. So this project is about 30 feet wide uh, and about 150 feet long. Um, it uh, 
uh, runs from the tidal interface, elevation zero, up to elevation 10, so about 10 feet in elevation across that disk. The drainage area for this project is largely impervious. It's a, it's a street end and a uh, dense housing development and R2 housing development, so lots of runoff uh, delivered to this site. Uh, previously was entering uh, tidewater of the Magathy River here, uh, hot and polluted, lots of um, pollutants in it. Um, the system of step pools will capture that hot water cleanse it and convert it to cold, clean groundwater before it enters the river now. This is actually a swimming beach for this community, so um, direct effects uh, for the health of human beings here. There are lots of other interesting plants that are associated with the cedar bogs in this area. Uh, American cranberry, yes, the cranberry that we eat Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, the swamp azalea, honeysuckle, very fragrant flower, clethra, another fragrant flower that lots of insects uh, are attracted to. One of the most important species here, the Sweet Bay Magnolia. Evergreen plants with a cream-colored blossom about the size of your fist in May. Pitch pine. The pitch pine are interesting. They occur in a crescent-shaped band from the New Jersey Pine Barrens back around to about Fredericksburg, Virginia. You know, part of this ecosystem gradient that ranges from the high and dry pitch pines down to the cedar and then down to the cranberry and uh, blue flag iris in the pools here. So the net effect of the plants is that they are creating organic carbon in the water column here that's allowing for nitrogen removal. There's lots, you can see there's lots of coarse woody debris that's placed in the pools initially. Uh, that starts driving those organic carbon processes from denitrification to uh, building the peat layer, which the fiber roots of all these plants are going to subsequently invade, uh, so uh, thereby building a big sponge through this uh, system here, helping remove additional pollutants from the water column. In the bottoms of the pools, we plant American Cranberry, Golden Club, Blue Flag Iris, uh, they go underwater with the large storm events and uh, are wetland species. Just above that is the um, Magnolia virginiana. Uh, beautiful cream-colored flowers in May and uh, dense fibric roots. Stormwater runoff is the worst problem for rivers and creeks in Anne Arundel County. There are th 535 miles of rivers and creeks in this county, extraordinary. And they all empty into the Chesapeake Bay, forming the basis of the kind of pollution that we're suffering from. So it's really important for you to search your own neighborhoods for areas where stormwater runoff is directed into creeks or rivers where your children swim, where you fish and kayak. Involve your neighbors in planning to transform that polluted runoff into groundwater that feeds the aquifers we need for drinking water. Think about applying for a grant to do a project and call me if you have questions. I'm Ann Pearson, Director of the Alliance for Sustainable Communities. This project brought the community together through their volunteer efforts in its construction and now enjoyment of the setting's amenities such as kayaking, picnics, swimming, and to simply enjoy the beautiful views. We hope surrounding communities and organizations will consider this project and their unique setting to improve stormwater management, increase property values, and enhance the quality of life for their communities.